Hey projectors, Bang is here again. Today we're doing lights, driving lights on this Toyota Hilux. Uh, this is a 2018 Toyota Hilux. I don't, I don't know the exact model. Uh, 2.8 litre 4D4. Right, there you go. So the lights on this are okay. Um, it's got these LED side running lights which are great when you're parking and in the dark and that sort of stuff and on the grass. But where we live out here, you get out of town uh, and immediately you can't see a thing. You know, all, even a lot of the normal headlights on a lot of the modern cars are just not that good. So I, to, I went into, I was in Kings the other day and the guy said, so I'm looking for a set of lights and he pointed me towards these. And it was like 90 bucks and they threw in the wiring limb kit as well so seven inch lethal driving lights from kings uh it's 100 11,890 lumens per pair okay great story i don't i'm just not that into lights i don't really care that bad i just need it to be effective right i just need uh the lights on the front to give when i'm driving at night coming home uh you know, the chance of hitting a root is dramatically decreased. You see everything. All right, so we need that. So, And then you get this plug and play wiring loom. So these just aren't that hard. So we'll get into this, we'll get into it, we'll get set up. We've got a few tools here. Uh, you know, I've got the heat shrink bag of joy here. I've got all the, my box of crimps and whatever else I'm gonna need. I've got a few bits and pieces that I thought I might need. The other specialty thing that I got was this. OEM style switch so it's a detent switch so you switch it and it stays on uh, it lights up like what's in the dash and this is here gun series GUN and that is that matches so gun GUN series 2015 onwards to current so that's going to give me the switch in the dash as opposed to the switch that's in this which is just they just never fit they're okay they just don't fit that good so I'll run you through all the details and we'll, we'll get into it. Um, so the first thing that I'll, I'll say is that switch. I'm just going to go and pop the bottom. So the G, the switch, right? This is where you get, this is where you get that number from. So on this Hilux here, in the bonnet, under the bonnet, here is the compliance plate. So GUN is the start of the VIN number. Right, and it's a 2018 model. So that's how I know GUN. The start of the model number starts with GUN. All right, and that's what we did here. GUN series Hilux 2015 to current. So we're going to have to sort that out first. So the wiring loop. Crack this bad boy open. This is. We'll start at the start. These are like a magical kit that does everything, but I don't think it does. So we've got a few things in there if we get stuck. I'll put those aside for a minute. There's our switch. Get this magical kit out. Whoops. So the beauty of this is, is that it's, it's, it's this kit, right? That just um, has everything magically already in it. So, Let's start the lights. That's probably the best, easiest spot to start. So, like I said, I don't care for branded lights. You know, steady this, tough this, tough that. I just need the lights to work, and I just don't care that much. I put these style of lights on before, and they work fine. They've got like X amount of warranty. Great, no problem. And over there, they're heavy enough. Box. You can go over there. Now these are seven inch. I don't need don't need overkill. I think the next up was nine inch and they were giant. This is ridiculous. So there's that light. Heat sink on the back. Good bracket. Alright. Jeez, they're pretty good. I can't understand how they make this that cheap. There's the clip on the back. We'll get that, we'll get one light there, we'll get the other one out. There's all the bracketry. 
I'm going to do some Bob's gasket to go underneath it. Warranty, I'll keep that. Box can go over there. No, I was coming home the other day, you really, it's get, you know, you just can't see the road. It's ridiculous. And it makes all the, these lights make all the difference. There we go. Jeez, they've come away, these lights, haven't they? More hardware, another warranty card. Get rid of that box. So, in this system, working from the lights back, you've got the lights, then you've got this double ended thing, a splitter. These lights draw up, not that big of amps, so this will this end will go into the wiring loom. Here, essentially, this is just like plugging this into a power point, and this will go to the two lights. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll probably end up mounting the lights first just to get them in a good position, and then put this through and zippy it up and have that. See, just kind of lightly test it and put it in the vehicle, and then. For those of you who don't understand this, you need to switch your lights and you need to have a fuse in it. So this is what does the switching, the relay. So you can't have the giant power that it needs going into the dash and into the little switch and then all over the vehicle. It's not how you want it done. So this one, we'll get these out. There should be three of these in here. All right, there's one of those, four in the end. Here's the other one. Done this once or twice before, and it's a bit easier if you understand what's going on with it. So there's the, there's the switch in the dash. So what happens is power, get these untwisted. This has two lots of power going through it. One lot of power is for the coil to energize the coil and one lot of power is the main power. Now this is a this is 40 amps, 40 amps to run the lights. You're switching that 40 amps on and off. And what does that switching? Is the switch. Or in this case, you've got the switch on and then the, this circuit is getting power when you put your high beams on. Okay, so all this is doing is literally we're just making another little switch up in the dash so all this is doing is running that wire all the way one side of this switch all the way up into the dash so we can switch it in the cab okay so you've got the mains power going to the battery and then a fuse switch fused on the power draw side and then earthed so you can feel how hefty these cables are okay they go up into here and they're switched as well they're, they're switched by the power that is get, bringing, is brought from our high, high beams. Then the other one of these is that power that comes from the high beam on the back of the light. And this one is then going to the lights. So if you just start in one place, I've found, it's relatively easy to get going. The few places that I start is, I mount the lights, I put this cable onto the lights, then I mount this, which is the relay, and I mount that near the battery. I just screw right into the, sometimes there's a bolt hole there, I just screw right in, and there's your, there's your fuse. Tip for young players, take this fuse out first, all right? Keep it safe. Um, that's a 25 amp fuse, okay, blade fuse. If you mess around with this with it in, there's a chance you can, like if you accidentally don't touch one of these on something that shouldn't be or touch on the battery she'll fry it then you'll be back down the Joe can't get another one so uh, these our little friends are the adapters that go on the headlights so for example some headlights run they have this on the back all right so some headlights have this all right, so you go, this is the power coming from your car. It would normally be, this thing would normally be plugged straight into the back of your headlight. So you take that out, you put this in its place, you can still run the power from your vehicle, and then that piggybacks, it gives you that switching power to say, hey, the high beams are on, 
okay? That's what that does. And we're going to see all these Hilux if they're going to fit. I fucking doubt it. So I'll have to come up with our own plan, okay? I don't know if they run this. I don't know if they run that. I'll ha we'll have to have a look. If not, we'll have to... All we're doing is just making sure that we've got that, got that power from somewhere. And if not, we'll use our trusty test light to put the high beams on and make sure which of that wire is the is that switching wire on the high beams or we use that to switch that relay. All right, which is pretty sweet. It also comes with a 24 volt relay for a truck or a loader or some other thing you're putting lights on, right? Some vans are 24 volt. Okay, so 12 volt, 24 volt. We're using the 12 volt. That's our system that we've got, okay? I always check these to make sure they're not. I had ones that they were a bit loosey goosey and wasn't quite right. Uh, in the past, I've also made these wires longer, okay, because they just didn't reach. So I just cut it, splice into it, make it longer to get to where we want to go, make it nice. Okay, we're going to check out, we're going to mount the lights and we'll get into it. So to make life easier while I'm working, putting the headlights in, I'm going to take this plate out and maybe even take the grill out. Okay, I've done that before, just to make life easier. These little clips on the um, uh, on this Hilux, you can either prise that out, or I just I just push down on it, and it sort of pops it out the way. I pop them up. They seem to come out fine. I've got a little screwdriver there. All right, I either pop them up, push them down. They seem to be coming out pretty easy by just pushing them down. Oh, there we go. That one's popping up pretty easy. Oh. Snapped it, we get another one of those. We'll just get all these little clips out. Worth spending the time on this because you'll just end up struggling to get all what you need to do up, run up underneath here. Once I take all those out. Tart, the plate will just come right off, which is great. And over there, you can really see the room I've got down here now. I almost do whatever I like. I don't. What's this? I took this grill out down here as well, and I took this. I took that top plate out. I'm going to leave that grill in place because I'm going to end, want to end up putting the wires through there somewhere and zipping them on. But this is giving me enough room to get to these bolts here. The previous person there had. I think this has already had lights, unless these. Um, hey, Spud, how are you? Good. Unless these had already. That's that Allen key there. Take this bolt out. I think somebody had already uh, had lights in here. I had something in here because, unless this is factory, because there's a bolt here already. Let's see what that looks like on the other side. Yeah, maybe that's a factory thing. I don't know. It's got a, usually with a flames washer, it's a factory thing. Chokes one of those lights, legend. They're both the same, it doesn't matter. Yep, good man. So I reckon with that, oh sweet, that hole is exactly, is just exactly perfect to fit that in there. And it's behind the front of the car there. Look at that, no drilling required. Yep. All right, so I think what we'll do is, these have a provision to put a lock in them for when you've spun them left and right. There's a rubber gasket. There's a rubber gasket here that goes underneath. So I reckon with that rubber gasket, I'm only going to need the one bolt. It's a pretty big bolt, so I just don't have to re-drill. If they spin or whatever, which I don't think they will, this is if you like mounting them sideways or mounting them on the roof of shooting or something. Like that. We're not doing that. We're just driving straight ahead. So I'll put that on, put the bolt in. What I'm going to do now, I know they both fit. I'm going to take this off and just have the bracket so I can work. Uh, I'm going to take these off now, just work with the bracket, not the light. So... On closer inspection, uh, I think it's a bit easier. We'll leave the light on, but what you got to realise is there's a captive plate in here for the top of this bolt. So it turns out, you, you know, there's a fair bit more room than I thought. That there's no washer on top; just goes straight into that captive area there. That I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but in there, there's a locating section for that head of that bolt. So we go straight on straight down into that hole. I was hoping that hole would be big enough. No, nah. okay, we're gonna have to drill that hole out. 
Okay, so we've got this bolt, we've got that one there. We made enough room, that hole's big enough now. We had to drill out to M12. Um, it was a bit of a wild process, but um, yeah, that's what you gotta do. It's like, drill was catching because there's two plates in there, not one. There we go, that's nice. Now, tip for young players is when you're, when you're doing stainless, Stainless, stainless steel balls up. So if you just run that nut up real quick, stainless to stainless, this is just a little bit of lube. I'll put that on there. Mm -hmm. That belt's a bit tricky to get in. And you got big, when you got big octopus fingers, uh, rubber gasket as well. There we go. And we're not gonna get too wound up about positioning any of that. We're just gonna get it run up, get it done. The head of this bolt is 19. Oh, it has a bit. Yep, 19. Excellent. And we don't need a we don't need a nut on the top because it's in that. We don't need to hold the top because it's captive in that. Oh geez, that's tight up in there. That's going to be a bit of a mission. Yeah, you keep the head on. You keep the pressure on that spot. That's it. Whoops. See how this normal. Let me get a hold of that bolt, that's right, let me get a hold of that. I'm going to spin that from the top, it's a bit easier. Nice. Right. nuts on. Yep. I, think, I think the regular socket with the extension might do it. 18 nine. Extension. There we go. I can get that on there. Oh yeah, beautiful. That will do it. Oh. There we go. There we go, that's nice. So I'm not going to get too wound up about getting this ultra tight at the moment. I'm just going to nip that whole thing up. Oh yeah, they're not going to swivel. That one nut's more than enough. So I haven't really tightened those right up yet. I'm leaving that loose for now. Uh, we'll do the other side. Happy days. Alright, so things in here for a tight shot there. Gasket. Mm. Whatever right there. We're putting our that bolt on the top here, just that bolt on its own. Straight down through the hole. We'll pick up our washer and our nut up underneath. Okay, yeah. Straighten up that gasket. Too tight just now in case we've got a backtrack. Beautiful. Alright. So the lead you get, the lead, the length of uh, lead you get on these is quite short. And where I want to put this away out of the way from the battery and everything else is uh, is not a good spot. So I'm gonna lengthen those just by simply I'm gonna chop those off about there. I'm gonna connect them with these bullet connectors. All right, crimp them down. Make sure I've got the crimps here. Yep, I've got the crimps. Uh, so I'm just gonna strip these back enough. Uh, strip that bad boy. Oops. Strip this one. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. Twist those up so they're good to go. Heat shrink on because it's the, uh, the amount of times I've forgotten my old heat shrink. Connector on. Connector on. There we 
go, crimp those up. Oh yeah baby, that's crimped. Okay, quick test run. Happy days, it's good. Alright. Now I've got this is this is a spare bit of cable off another light that I had. I just pilfered it and saved it. Pretty good, it's the same amperage. So I'm just gonna make that, just gonna snip that other connector off. I'll give it a little bit just in case you need that one day. I'm not keeping that. You never know it might come in handy. So we'll do the same here to lengthen this. Uh like this. up on here, red in here, red will go in there, nice, crimp, I'll go anywhere, black, look you could solder these lights together but oh God, you know what, I've got the solder in there, it's just like, just crimp it, if I'll come back and it all works great, one day I'll come back and solder it, yeah that's perfect. Heat shrink up and over. Whoops. The kink, there we go. Once you get your heat shrink going, you, I mean, that's sweet. That'll do just about anything. Let's get the heat going. So all I've done is lengthen the two cables that they already gave us. All right? Now you could probably, world's best practice, you could probably tape those up, but that's it. That's good. It's just 12 volt. It's fine. So that brings us to where I, where I was going to mount this in the vehicle. So if you see here, if I mounted it in here or I mounted it over here, it just those cables were going to be too short and it was all in the way if i mounted it down here that's like it's just it's just a punish so what i'm decided to do is mount it over here there's plenty of room to mess around with it make sure you mount it right there and i'm just going to literally going to tech screw into the frame okay it's of no consequence i could use a bolt if i had a you know self tapping screw but that's it i'm just going to tech screw that right in Okay, trusty tech screw bit. In we go. In we go, attached. So now we can start running out our leads and these leads will go nicely. They'll just tuck in, they can actually tuck in behind that fuse um, situation there. So. What I did, what I've done in the past is actually take this, take that off, and now I'm going to run in behind this fuse panel in here, so that everything's kind of nice and neat. I mean, this is an old vehicle; it's done a couple of hundred thousand k's, but it's still pretty good. So, so I've run that up underneath through there, so it's nice and neat. And now, just making sure I'm going back on in the same orientation. Yep, beautiful. And now I can also, all these cables are nice and neat through here. I'll end up probably just zip tying that all to each other down in there. Pulling those through, making it nice and neat. There's that fuse. The fuse is there. I can get access the fuse down in there. So I can access the fuse down in there. Those cables are nice and neat under there. They'll be out of the way. I can go, I can go ahead and run. So now, what's that thing doing? That's out of the way. Get rid of that for now. That red one's out of the way for now. So now it'll be a situation of this red cable. Look at that, she can come right up nice. 
nice and neat up under there, not in anybody's way. I may in fact run it in there with the battery. Uh, actually, I'll run it. I'll run it down through there with this other cable and pick up on the outside. Then we'll pick up this point over here, that main point. Happy days. Might, might even pick up one of these. Uh, and then the earth is ready to go. It's right here. I'm just going to pick that up and, uh, yeah, like everything other, other stuff they put onto there. So, um, I'm thinking we're going to use, we'll use the main, we'll use the main one. That's what we, that's what we want to do. This main bolt here. 13, I'm tipping. No. 12. Yeah, happy days. Whatever this powers. Okay, I don't know what that powers, but we don't, we won't take it all the way off. Okay, that, that ring's a bit big. I think I've got the one size down for that. Let's just double check that. It's this blue one doing. Oh, that's the perfect size. Okay, and that will take that, that will take that size of cable too. So, we get this all plenty. Give myself, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of cable so we can bring it up, up through there. I think that's, I think that's gonna be good. All right. I'm gonna cut that. We've got plenty of room. Yeah. I always get worried I don't give it enough room, so I'll give it. That's plenty. All right. Get rid of that. Strip this bad boy. Oops. There we go. Strip that off. That's nice. Put that connector somewhere. Unbeknownst to me, where I put it. Here it is. Oh, some heat shrink. forever forgetting to put the heat shrink on there we go heat shrink on first you can see once you get once you get into this a bit you can you can go yeah you know, it doesn't take all day and there's that fitting i'm just trying to capture all the okay that's 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 pretty good i want to make sure that all the wires are up inside so I just give a little twist as i put it on you don't really want too much hanging out the front, but that's okay, but you want to make sure that it's captured at the back. That there's no wires hanging out the back, do you know what I mean? And... Grimp. Beautiful. Heat shrink. Get on there. Heat shrink's just the only stuff I've got. It's not quite... Not quite the right size. I'm gonna squeeze that with my hands a bit to try and get that on. No, doesn't want to play ball. Just gonna give the back of that a little squeeze. So that's a bit rounder again. Oh, there we go. No, it's still fighting me. No, it's going. Never so slightly. Right, that'll do. Hey, Trink. You know, it's worth doing all these tiny little bibs and bobs, you know. It makes it, it makes all the difference. Getting it right, getting it just right. Okay, I'm just gonna put I'm not gonna hook it up now. I'm just gonna put that back on. See the little sparkies there, just things trying to connect and you know, stay together for it to reset the radio or something after this. Alright, uh, so that's there. Got plenty of room. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Chop that off. Strip that back. I don't have a fancy set of strippers because you know why? They're right-handed. Anybody cares to know? Okay, that's the same. I'm gonna use that blue one, that same blue one. There we go. Same blue one, some black heat shrink. Black heat shrink, heat shrink on. Not to forget. Excessive on the heat shrink there. But that's, just say that bit. Stuff doesn't grow on trees. There we 
we go, heat shrink on. You know, you don't think that heat shrink makes a difference, but it makes a difference to the connection, it makes a difference to, yeah, it heaps of different stuff. Okay, here we go. Grim. I'm just getting that in a good position. Look at the beans. There we go. Oh, that's the heat shrink. That's a good connection. Heat shrink up. Heat gun. Beautiful, that's that's that part done. I'm just gonna leave those disconnected till we get to the right to, to the very end. Now I'm gonna work out a plan for a few of these and work backwards from the easiest one. So the easiest one is going to be the power to the lights, which is this one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the other. If I haven't lost it, here it is. This one which is the double, single to the double. So I'm gonna run that from the lights. So I'm gonna run that down through here into the lights. I'm gonna hook up the lights first, but I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go straight into the grill first with each one of these, so it's hidden, it's hidden the best. All right, that needs to be in there. And I'm coming out through the back of the grill in a good spot looks to be just underneath the light there and you can see here I'm coming out and I'm just picking up that light and I'm literally plugging it in as we go click seated nicely done you don't even notice that that's there, that's great. Okay, this one will be the same. You can see here, I'm just going, I'll tidy all that up later. I'm just getting this and I'm coming out through the back of the grill there. Just going bang out through the back of the grill. Here's this one. Making sure I'm the same one as before. And just picking up that back of that light there. Click, happy days. Now what I've got to do is make a decision about where I'm going to run this up through to here. There's plenty of little gaps in here to get away from the radiator and the air conditioning cooler and lots of stuff and all the coolers. So I'm going to just sneak it through this little bit here and just craftily run it up. I can run it up beside the light here. See through there. I'll do that now. I'll come back and tie those up later. I'm going down past that light, uh, down past that plastic bracket. Coming down out past the light here. Beautiful. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to connect that up, but I'm not going to do that right now because what I've actually just thought is I'm going to run this one, run this one down through here, pardon me. And it's all going to be nice and tucked away down in there. I'll zippy that up later. And what I may in fact do is have the ball of extra cable in this gap in here, in this hidden gap. So I'm going to run that. Actually, I'm actually going to connect that up. Pull it back through. And it will all end up tucked down in here, but I'm just going to leave it out. I'm just going to leave it hangly dangly until I'm satisfied that it's all working and everything. So that's one whole portion of that hooked up. The lights are hooked up. They're hooked up back to the to the relay. Uh, we've got our battery terminals ready to go. Uh, now we can work out. Now we can work on getting power to this from our high beam circuit, which is down here somewhere. All right, so we've got to check that out. So the reason I disconnected this, I'm going to go and turn the car on, turn the lights on. Uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, it's this one here, which is the... So, happy coincidence. If you've got the Hilux and this model, this fits right onto the back of those lights. 
the big the big it's a bulb light or whatever it is like it's not a not an led or anything so down in here i took this off the back of the headlight there and this will connect straight up so this will connect straight up onto there all right this one will go into where that was normally with the headlight okay just making sure that's gonna go all the way on and clip on There we go, that clipped on. It's a little, little bit wide at the back. I was worried it wasn't going on, but I didn't want to force it too hard. So that one's on there. This one back on the back of the headlight. Making sure I've got that orientation right. Yeah, that's out this way. So that's easy. That's about the easiest one of these I've ever done. Normally got to make up another little circuit and carry on and what have you. So that's in the back of the headlight. And what I'm left with is this. So now we're getting process of elimination. So there's the one. Now when the headlight is on, this will get power. And it's just that easy. Make sure those are all like, just check these before you put them all on. Cause they're a bit, a lot of times they're loosey goosey in there. So they're not that good quality, but just, yep, beautiful. So again, I'm not going to tuck all that in. I'm not going to get it all perfect until we're ready to go. Now, the last thing that's left is this thing, is the dash switch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of photos of this. And then I've got the OEM. Just right out here today. I've got this OEM dash one that we'll do. Now, yeah. and we'll wire up this OEM switch and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, we'll be back. So, I've got everything wired up. I've actually connected, I've connected the positive and the negative up to the battery. And I've mounted everything over there. Uh, I've got everything, I've got everything hooked up. I've got the original switch on there before I go through the flywall and connecting up the OEM switch. So I'm gonna put the fuse back in, turn the car on, check that everything works that I've done so far. That way I know the lights actually work from the manufacturer. That way I know all the wirings works and some of those things aren't perfect. You know, you might have to fix one of the terminals or something. I'm gonna put this fuse back in now and actually test the system as it is. That fuse is in, I'm gonna turn the car on. So the car's on, the car's on with the high beams on and now I'm gonna flip this switch. Beautiful. Whew, lights are on. Okay, so that's proving that system already that everything works. You can see the lights go on there. Okay, that's beautiful. Now I'm gonna leave it on and I'm gonna toggle the I'm gonna toggle the high beam. Before I got too invested, I checked that everything worked. So that all that OEM switch and stuff and everything, all the fuse and everything, that was good. So we're good to go. So pretty excited, we're nearly done. So what we're gonna do now is, is change this switch over to this OEM switch. Cause that's what's gonna go in now. That's what's gonna fit right into the, into the Land Cruiser, ah, the, What's this thing? A Hilux. Right, so these two, these two are the power. This is power in and power out. All right, and on the OEM switch, and the black is our earth for the light, okay? So, or ground as they call it. So, earth is black, yeah, no kidding. So we hook up the earth to this here, this one. On this one here, we're gonna wire that up, and then dash light is blue, so we're not gonna touch that for now. And red in and out, 12 volt in and out, is uh, this red and green. Okay, so we're gonna make red and green are gonna be blue and white. Black is gonna be black and blue. If we can see if we can get in under there and pop one of other, those other switches out, we can um, piggyback off one of the other grounds in there. And um, we'll go from there. So what we're gonna end up doing 
is we're going to pop this switch out here from in, in, in around the back. So I'm tipping usually the easiest way to do this is to pop these glove boxes out. And usually it's that little button there that comes out on either side. Okay, that's on this side. Yep, same button. I just got to twist that button. Sometimes they're tight. You need a pair of pliers. Nope, go. Okay. And then that dash will come down. That box will come down and we can get it out. Okay. Uh, it's got a soft closer on it. We need to be careful not to break that. We'll get that glove box out. Just disconnected that. This should some these normally go in the exact oh there we go in the exact right orientation. So I'll put that aside in the back. With a bit of finagling, that whole thing comes off, right? Which is great. So we're going to lay that to the side. Now I just prized up under here to prize out some of those clips that come out. And now we can get to these switches at the back here and get them to pop out. A little screwdriver in there. So this is how it one popped out. Okay, so again with the testing. Now, I've got the OEM switch, and I've gone, they tell me, so blue is for the light. I've just put that crimp on there, and I'll tape that up. I don't want to do that. It's just too much messing around with the OEM electrics. I just leave it out, right? I don't need to. I know where it is in the cab. I'm not that fancy, okay? Uh, and it said that power in, power out, so black was the ground. Power in, power out was the green and the red blue and white okay now I've gone with crimps because uh, I don't want to get too committed to all this and I've got to test it and then I'll wound these up I'll poke this through the flywheel the whole lot if I'm trying to solder and everything it's just a punish that's just they're good quality crimps that's as good a connection as you'll get okay and I'm switching that switch lights are on lights are off lights are on lights are off I can hear the relay going nothing's grounding out nothing's shorting out now I can go and put this wire through to the cab so what we're going to do is we're going to go down through this hole here where these electrics are in in the in here we're going to poke a hole in that and we're going to go through we're going to pull the cables through there to get into the back of the car okay you can take these boots on and off okay but it's not advised they're a punish to get back on there's even a little there's even a little spare one there look i didn't notice that on these okay down through a bit of rubber but you know We'll see how we go. Maybe that's the one for us. Maybe it's not, but we'll see how we go. Okay. Maybe we just go through the side here, through this one. Okay. Or we can come through on this side. Depends on how what we see up underneath the in the flywheel. So what I'm doing here is making a pull to get the a cable puller to get the wires through that rubber grommet. Now you see here I've stripped back a fair bit of that, okay, because I'm going to use the friction of this and I want to send one of these heads through that grommet at a time, okay. You'll, you'll never get them all through at, at once. I've got some electrical tape here. This is a really good gauge of white fencing wire, okay. So I'm going to nestle that in there and tape it on and that'll be the first one it's going to go around. We'll spend a bit of time doing this getting it right getting it nice and tight and then we're even going to lube it up with a bit of lube spray before it goes through the grommet okay so we're just 
There's that one there, tucked on. And we're going to use the, oh, twisty there. We're going to use the friction of the tape against the wires to pull them in. So, uh, to, 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 to keep them uh, from stripping out. So, there's the next one. And now it'll be getting easier because we've already got one to go through. So there's that one getting taped on. All right, oh, careful, I don't scratch the car with the wire. So I'm taping that up and getting it nice and snug, nice and tight. Now that white one's in the way, that's okay. We'll massage that cable back out of the way. Now we're coming with the next cable. So I actually found the 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 best, the better one to go through is going to be that other that main grommet. It's got the wiring limb going through it. Just there's heaps of room on it. It's just going to slip through the, a hole in the bottom that I poked through with a screwdriver. Um, yeah, no, you don't want anything too sharp going through there. You know, spend your time on this because those grommets you think they're not that rubbery, but they really are. So now all these wires are getting a bit bunched up. I'm just bringing them back. Working them back inside the loom there. The black one's going to be too long. I'm just going to double it over. Okay, like that. So, not spin this around that way. So, tape, tape, tape. Don't have to get too fancy with the tape now because it's, you know, would have already started through the hole in the grommet. That way. There we go, getting to the end there. So, it's back to the sheath of the, what's his name? Just going to. Make those nice and flat. And keep that wire away from things. Okay. There we go. Excellent. Then we're going to feed that through first. So I don't need that much. Let me get rid of that there, that bit there. Let's go a little bit longer. There we go. I'm just going to feed that through the grommet, 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 grommet. So we're going to lube this up now. The spray, the spray here earlier. Uh, I'm not going to lube that, but I'm going to lube this. Okay, get that all lubed up. All slippery. Yeah, you'd be surprised how much help that makes. And then I'm going to feed it through that big grommet down in there. You can see there. You can almost see there. We already poked that hole in. Then she's through. I'm just going to go into the cab, make sure I'm not. Okay, that's coming through where I want it, which is good. I'm going to pull it gently and see what happens. Okay, great. That was pretty seamless. That went all the way through. Um, I can I can push that now. That's how good those cables are. So I'm just going to make sure I've got the right. I'm all in the right spot here. Oh, dickhead! I should have run it back there. That's okay. It can live there. It can live going like that. It's not hurting anybody. I could come back and do that again, but I'm just not that. I'm not that fast. I'm going to leave a bit of room to zippy tie that up. Just pushing that through that grommet. That grommet's got a bloody good seal around that cable. I'm not even gonna, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do anything else. So, that's in there now. Just taking that fuse out again while I'm working on this thing, just in case I hung up, hang up on something. So, that's all looking pretty good. I'll put all that in there for now. So, this is where that came through in that grommet. It's hard to see up in there, there's all the carpet in the way, but I had that carpet back. And that's locked up, that's like that cable was there all along. So now we're going to run it, we're just going to run it wherever we see fit up into the back here. Is that our OEM switch. Alright, make sure we got it up the right way. Just under all our tape work over here. Where do we start? Because everything's looped up. It's a bit of a punish, but we'll make it happen. Okay, so there's our three cables again. So we're going to run it, you know, we're just going to run it where all their cables are. That's all we're going to do. Probably run it there. Get that up out of the way of the fan box. Beautiful. I'll zippy tie all that. There's a little sneaky hole there. There's no reason that's not going to hit on anything or it's not going to disrupt anything. 
through there. Bring that out through that hole there. Beautiful. There we go. Get all that junk off my hands. And then we knew that black was to black. Okay, so that was the black. Blue was the lights, which we're not using. And then green was output. And that was input. Okay, so now we had that failed connector and whatever else. Before we go wiring it all up and we go putting the switch in, you know, test, test, test. So we're going to flash the ignition up again. All right. Now we're not working. Because the fuse wasn't in. Make sure they're off. On, off. Lights on. Beautiful. Lights on. Lights off. Lights on, lights off. That's beautiful. And we nailed it. So just as an added precaution under here, I'm going to wrap these up with tape, okay? Just because, you know, you don't want them hanging around in there, carrying on, touching things. So we're going to tape this one up. Okay, so I've zippied that up. I've zippied that in there. That's looking nice. The switch is working, driving lights. All right, and then I'll just, you know, you see they'll put that plate back in. It's like it was meant to be there just about, okay? I've just zipped it to the OEM spec there. Glove box back in. Get the right angle of the angle, there we go. Can't miss out the baby wipes. Putting that soft closer back on. And I left the pins in here somewhere. These are like a 90 degree turn pin. That just turn 90 degrees if you you gotta have them in the right way. Yeah, there we go. Like it's gotta be pin has to be uh, the pin has to go in the right way for it to operate to get on the cam so what I'm seeing here is that little cam is up pin goes in and then you click it in backwards you know really a good project there we go shut that jobby do right now this one is I've got that in I've got that all tucked in out the way that's good. This one's got to go under that one. I'm just prizing that out a little bit. And then just gently, gently feed, make sure everything's fed back in properly. All sorts of stuff on here that's trying to be a switch and a this and a that. There we go. It's a little low. I'm just gonna get that in, just gonna get that under there first. There we go. Let's give it the old shove a root. Give that one a shove. There we go. Like we were never here. Okay gang, so that's it. I'll run you through it. We've got the lights on the front there. That look really nice. I think that's a uh, oh, perfect uh, size there, the seven inches opposed to the, I think it was nine inches the next size up, which is just wild. And like I said, I'm not that into lights, uh, but I just need them for functionality, right? So uh, they're on nice and tight. I haven't really adjusted them that good yet. I'll wait till it gets dark. I put this guard back on. I put, I put this guard back on here. All those cables are just zippied up in under here. I'm hoping you can see, I've got the torch here. They're all just zippied in, tucked down in there. All right, and you can see the there's that earth lead coming off there. Okay, nice, a bit of heat shrink, nice. You wouldn't even know it's there. Right, there's the there's the positive there, sneaking back down in underneath behind the battery. All right, and then there's the there's the relay, there's the fuse, there's that cable. You probably could go 
Cogdale zippy tie there, which I will do actually at the end. You see there, that's it sneaking through that grommet. All right, so just, you know, just, you just got to test this stuff and have a, have a bit of a look and have a bit of a go. Uh, that's what DIY is all about, right? And what's the worst going to happen? You fuck it up, you take it to the shop and you go, mate, I fucked it up, you know? He's nice, it's DIY. All right, now we're in the cab. We've got, our, we've got our OEM switch there. All right, and if I start the car, right, it just acts like everything else except it won't have that, it won't have that dash light on it, right? Which is fine, I don't really care. All right, and then now, now, high beams. Beautiful. So when I've got, when I've got the high beams on, that will light saying, hey, this is an option, which I really think that's pretty cool, so. Anyway. So that's that project. I hope that if that helped anybody or you're thinking about doing this yourself, if you've got one of these Hiluxes and you're thinking, geez, I'd really love a set of lights. This was, these were 90 bucks at King's four-wheel drive superstore at where, uh, yeah. I couldn't believe how that cheap. So, yep, no worries. And that was, there was a deal on you get the wiring limb for free. So, uh, yeah. Pretty stoked. Happy projecting. Mm -hmm.